What are the oldest countries in the world? It's a difficult question to answer because we need to define two things. One, what do we consider a country? And two, how do we measure the continuity of said country? For instance, do we consider certain early settlements in Greece as countries, their gathering as a whole, or are they local city-states that have nothing to do with Greece as we know it today? And then the issue of continuity. For instance, Italy as a country is extremely recent, only dating back to the 19th century, but there was essentially a country existing in part of its territory before the Roman Empire. Does that count or should we count it as a precursor for all the countries in the territory it occupied. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to try and only mention the ones that have a serious continuity throughout the ages, and I'm going to use one big criteria territory. Even if the regimes change, the rulers, etc., if the territories sort of stay the same, it's likely that the populations did too. And from my perspective, that's what makes a country. It's land, its culture, and its people. Therefore, keep in mind that a lot of these were not countries per se back then, but close enough that a certain continuity has remained until today, allowing us to point to the ancient times as their origin point. Before we get started, a quick thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. I'll talk about them a little later on into the video. Now onto the countries. First, Ethiopia. Archaeologists have found skeletons and evidences of human life in Ethiopia dating back to millions of years ago. But the establishment of the region as a country, if we can even call it that that early on, was a long time after that, but also a long time ago, in 980 BC. This was when one of the first kingdoms, known as the Dumt, rose to power. Ethiopia is one of the few African countries that never fell into the hands of colonizers. It uses the ancient Ge'ez script, which is one of the oldest alphabets still in use in the world, and for most of its history it existed as a kingdom and an empire, passing through various dynasties and being known through different names, such as Abyssinia and then transitioning into modern Ethiopia as a republic. Then moving on to Armenia. We all know Armenia as a country today, but its history goes back a long time. Legend says that Haik, the legendary founder of Armenia, fought against Belus, the Babylonian god of war, in 2107 BC, and then established the Armenian state. The real story, at least the one that we can actually verify with records, takes place in 331 BC. The kingdom of Armenia was founded sometimes known as Greater Armenia. Its history is divided into successive reigns by three royal dynasties, Orontid, Artaxiad, and Arsacid, then coming to an end in 428 AD. Its origin is related to another country we'll talk about in this video, beginning as a province of the Achaemenid Empire, the precursor of Persia. With the conquest of Persia by Alexander the Great, it was incorporated into the Seleucid Empire, then the Byzantine, and then some smaller temporary states until reaching the current form that we know today, but always somewhat maintaining its culture and people in roughly the same area. When it comes to no change in territory, we have one that stands out in Europe. Portugal. While definitely not as old as Greece or Ethiopia, Portugal has maintained its firm borders for almost a thousand years, making it one of the most identifiable, oldest countries in the world, especially because it defined its identity very early on. Portugal is the oldest nation state in the Iberian Peninsula and one of the oldest in Europe and the world. Its territory having been continuously settled, invaded, and fought over since prehistoric times. Found in 1868, the county of Portugal gained prominence because of its military successes. The Kingdom of Portugal was later proclaimed following the Battle of Oric in 1139, and independence from Leon was recognized by the Treaty of Zamora in 1143. Not only was it established fairly early, but its main significance as a nation, its people, its culture, and its language, and even its national symbols, and most of all, its territory, were also established very early on, remaining unchanged until today. All the way in Asia, Japan. Japan is also a contender as one of the oldest countries in the world. The first Japanese emperor, Jimu, who is said to be the descendant of the sun goddess Amaterasu, ascended to the throne in 660, 
BC, according to Japanese legend. The country of Japan started appearing in written records in around 300 AD, but it is very likely that they had existed way before that. So whether you believe in legend or not, Japan has certainly been around for a lot of time. It has maintained its territory in the Japanese archipelago, although sometimes expanding outside of it, and its people have remained the same. In fact, they still have an emperor, and they even got a new one this very year. So I think Japan is a prime example of an ancient country lasting until today. Next to it is another example, China. China is one of the world's oldest and most refined civilizations, and its very first dynasty, which was the Shia dynasty, is said to have started as early as 2000 BC. But a lot of its early history, just like Japan, is mixed with legends, so we can't be 100% sure of its accuracy. Even the written records are somewhat flawed, only emerging in 1600 BC. So it may be 1600, it may be 2000, maybe it's even before that. It went under various rulers, from a Mongolian dynasty to a Manchu one to European and Japanese occupation, changing their own system from monarchies to empires and republics. From 2000 BC to current times, over 4,000 years of history and existence, ranging from early feudal China to the Qing dynasty and the current People's Republic and Taiwan. Just like we'll see in a minute regarding Greece, ancient Egypt had little to do with modern Egypt, but it's still worth mentioning. The territory is slightly different, and especially the location of major cities, but it's still pretty much the same area. Egyptian hieroglyphics were the world's second oldest writing system, and the first Egyptian kingdom was formed in the 4th millennium BC. The ancient regime eventually came to an end, with the country being taken over by the Persians, the Mamluks, the Ottomans until reaching independence under its current form. Greece, like I mentioned, is also a tough call, but I think it should still be listed here because despite being separate in ancient times, it shared and together created a specific culture. Ancient Greece wasn't a country, it was a civilization, and this is the case with a lot of these early countries. It can be dated back to the 12th century BC, lasting all the way to their joining slash being conquered by the Roman Empire. After the fall of the Romans, it remained as a part of the Byzantine Empire. In fact, a lot of people claim that throughout all its existence, even before separation into East and West, the Roman Empire was always divided in two, the West being truly Roman and the East being Greek. When the Byzantine Empire collapsed, it became under Ottoman rule, sometimes directly and in some territories, not so much, having more local rulers, if you will. In 1832, it became its own independent kingdom, eventually evolving into the current form of Greece that we know. While Greece today has different borders, to that of ancient Greece and was composed of various independent city-states, much of its original culture remains evident and establishes it as one of the oldest countries in the world. The world's oldest republic, at least in continuity, is a very old country as well, San Marino. The country gets its name from Saint Marinus, a stonemason from the Roman Empire who lived in a province in modern-day Croatia. In the year 301, Marinus founded an independent monastic community on Monte Titano, therefore allowing the claim to be the oldest extant sovereign state, as well as the oldest constitutional republic. The nation is governed by the Constitution of San Marino, a series of six books written in Latin in the late 16th century. They dictate the country's political system. San Marino is considered to have the earliest written governing documents still in effect. I feel like this deserves a special place in the list because it's the most untroubled and unchanged of all of them. Not a lot has happened since its foundation that troubled its existence or changed the way they function. They came under threat from Napoleon, but managed to impress him enough to be their ally, and they were neutral in most of Italy's wars. A fun fact is that they made US President Abraham Lincoln an honorary citizen. He replied saying that San Marino proved that government founded on principles of a republic is capable of being so administered as to be secure and enduring. Persia slash Iran is also an example of an incredibly old country. This one is a good example of how countries change in their shape and designations. The first dynasty of the Persian Empire was created by the Achaemenids, established by Cyrus the Great in 550 BC. Eventually, Alexander the Great defeated the Achaemenids and created the Seleucid Empire, but that was also not meant to last, being defeated by the Parthians, and then came a time of trouble. They were 
were invaded a lot by the Arab dynasties and also briefly by the Mongols. These Arab dynasties ruled the territory for a long time, from 651 onwards. The last dynasty of Persia was the Pahlavi one, which ended in 1979 with a revolution that turned the country into Iran as we know it today. And finally, further east, Mongolia. When we think of ancient Mongolia, our mind instantly jumps to one person, Genghis Khan. At least mine does. And while he is the strongest and most well-known figure of old Mongolia, the country was around for a long time already before him. Various nomadic tribes ruled the area of present-day Mongolia from as early as 300 BC. The Khitan people, who used a kind of Mongolic language, founded a state known as the Liao Dynasty in 907 AD. In 1200, Genghis Khan was able to unite and conquer all of the Mongols, forging the largest contiguous empire in history, conquering vast regions of Asia and almost reaching into Europe. Eventually, the empire collapsed and Mongolia was ruled by the Chinese, then under Soviet influence, but eventually asserting themselves once again as their own sovereign nation. However diminished they may be today, compared to the old days, they still resist and have maintained their existence for hundreds and hundreds of years. Like I mentioned, today's video was made possible by Surfshark VPN. We live in a time where privacy seems to be a thing of the past, but it doesn't need to be. Surfshark VPN is an online service that allows you to protect your personal data and access online content in a safe way. It allows you to do four key things when you are online. One, secure your personal data. The fact that it's personal indicates no one else should have access to it. Two, access geo-specific content. Surfshark lets you access pretty much all streaming services libraries, no matter where you are. Three, bypass geo-pricing. People from different places might see different prices on hotels, etc. With a VPN service, this won't happen. And four, avoid internet censorship. If you travel to a country that bans Twitter, for instance, you can just use Surfshark and access it without a problem. They were nice enough to sponsor this video and also provide a great discount for viewers of the channel. So if you want to try Surfshark VPN, just go to surfshark.deals knowledge, enter promo code knowledge and get 83% off and three extra months for free. Now, we also have a lot of other examples of countries that date back a long time. And the truth is, we can do this with pretty much any country. It's true that only a few, like the ones I mentioned here, have a somewhat more direct line from ancient times to modern states. But any existing country can trace back its existence to those ancient periods. So these were some of the world's oldest countries, how they first emerged, how they evolved, and how they remain today as living representations of our history. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe. If you have any opinions, thoughts, corrections, pretty much anything you want to say, just leave a comment below. I will see you next time for more general knowledge.